in terms of uh, income, in terms of jobs and in terms of uh, development. He described tourism as essential to the development of any country and went further to say that the Gambia has a massive potential of becoming a tourist hub. We discussed the importance of, uh, uh, of tourism in Gambia. We discussed the need to promote the Gambia in, in the media and in campaigns that are necessary to open the eyes of the people as to the potentials of this beautiful place. Shortly after his meeting with Dr. Njai Saidi, the visiting diplomat held a press conference to share his views of the Gambia with the press corps. As your first official visit to the country, what's your general overview of the country's potential in terms of tourism? I think you have tremendous potentials in the Gambia. The reason why uh, I was very, very keen on accepting this invitation and really be honored to come here is the fact that this country has great potentials that are still to be utilized. And let me just give you some examples. It's a safe and stable and relaxed environment. And that's very important for a traveler and a visitor. The United Nations World Tourism Organization Secretary General believes that the Gambia has the right policies to attract a good number of tourists. I think so far you have done all the right moves. You have done all the correct policies. But much more needs to be done. When we talk about policies, we mean that all government agencies and ministries must become tourism sensitive. When you grant visas, how you grant visas, to who you grant visas, you affect tourism. When you uh, decide to construct a road, where you construct it, how you construct it affects tourism. He commended the Minister of Tourism and Culture for her steadfastness and dedication to market the Gambia as a perfect tourist destination. For GRTS News, I am Asadumar. 42 newly promoted officers of the Gambia Armed Forces today swore to execute their duties and responsibilities as prescribed by law. The program that swore the officers receive insignias that march their new ranks was presided over by the Vice President and Chairperson of the National Security Council. Isatumani picks up the rest of that story. The only way we can have development is for there to be peace and security. And the only way you can sustain what has been developed so far and make it useful to the people also is ensuring peace and security. These words of the Commander-in-Chief of the Gambia Armed Forces have been proven time and time again. President Jame has through the years attached great importance to the welfare of security personnel in the country by encouraging them and putting their welfare first. This is manifested through the years by the various chairs being given to the servicemen and women to recognize their dedication and determination to protect the country and her people. The promotions in the armed forces are not just routine exercises, but a deliberate effort on the part of the leadership to ensure meritorious services are recognized and rewarded accordingly. <laughs> Therefore, this particular promotion we are witnessing today is not just any other annual promotion exercise, but rather one that was conducted in accordance with a combination of certain principles and procedures as part of our transformation and restructuring process. Hard work, commitment and dedication are described as the yardsticks for promotion and not merely a routine exercise. The elevation of these officers according to Lamin Wajuara is a manifestation of the good work being conducted by these servicemen and women. The local government and lands minister used the cordial ties between military personnel and civilians to prove his point. We who are civilians can testify to the level of discipline in the army because of the cordial relations between the armed forces and the civilian population. The Minister of Health and Social Welfare, Fatim Baji, congratulated the officers on their new ranks and urged them to work harder. But one thing that impressed her most about the whole issue, the fact that women are not being left out. I'm very impressed to see um, health personnel within the military and even women being promoted to higher positions. It really is a noble profession. It is a noble profession that requires greater service and as a result this nation is progressing. Servicemen and women need to be wary of ethics of their profession which according to the Minister of Interior should be their mantra. This responsibility therefore 
is one in which you must mirror every day and remind yourself of the oaths that you are taking, what makes an army officer, why is an army officer different from the men, what is the driving force behind the rank, the, 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 the stars that are on your, on your shoulders, why is it sacred, how you have to comport yourself amongst you as officers, but equally also any time, every single moment in uniform or in mufti, in front of the men that you command and you lead. President Jame has always emphasized on the importance of security since the maintenance of peace and stability lies in their hands. And this was reinforced by the Vice President and Chairperson of the National Security Council. Aja Dr. Esetunjai Sedi said the Gambia Armed Forces has earned itself a place on the international scene with a marked difference bordering on a high sense of discipline and loyalty. Madam Jai Sedi reminded the officers of their Commander-in-Chief's love and concern for them and strongly recommended inter-service relationship between the various outfits forming the national security apparatus. Take guard of your core duties, but also inter-service relationship. I want to emphasize it because I'm in the, a member of the National Security Council. I'm not here only for the armed forces. Yes, I may be the chairperson of the armed forces, but also the National Security Council. So for me, security is one composite whole. We must work together. We must collaborate. Just like the security is collaborating with the civilians to ensure we, that we have a better country. In the same vein, within the security services, we have to have due regard for each other. The promoted officers were constantly reminded of the fact that to whom much is given, much is expected, and were therefore urged to emulate the footsteps of their senior men and women and abide by the six oaths they swore to. I, 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 having been commissioned, having been commissioned, and appointed to the rank of, and appointed to the rank of, in the armed forces of the Republic of the Gambia, in the armed forces of the Republic of the Gambia, for GRTS News, I am Isa Tumani. Well, congratulations. Ministers from member countries of the Non-Aligned Movement on Women's Advancement recently met in Doha, Qatar, but another high-level meeting is in the Afeng. Activists are warming up for the convergence of the Commission on the Status of Women due later next week in New York. Deliberations by delegates from the 45 member states are expected to focus largely on gains made and factors hindering greater success. Ibrahim Abaldi reports the Doha Declaration is expected to form part of the agenda at the United Nations. With a per capita income of more than 60,000 U.S. dollars, the state of Qatar hosted the third ministerial meeting of the non-aligned movement on the advancement of women in high spirit. The record attendance brought together participants from developing and least developed nations who have come to Doha with high expectations. The Doha Declaration, inspired by other resolutions or commitments adopted by international women's conferences held in several parts of the world over the years, basically talks about doing more to better the lot of women the world over. During the three-day conference, participants came up with suggestions on what should be done to tackle the major hurdles facing the development of girls and women. Hundreds of women who came from Africa came to Qatar purposely to ensure that their demands in terms of the challenges they are undergoing in sub-Saharan Africa will be met. However, they may not be met in one day, according to many speakers who emphasize here during the forum, but they shall be met said by many others, and this will be years to come before those demands are met. At the close of the Doha conference, the United Nations Under Secretary General, speaking on behalf of the UN Secretary General, said the UN was warming up for the next session on the Commission on the Status of Women, an annual general meeting which brings together delegates from the 45 member states. Being one of the towering figures at the UN by batch of our position, Asa Rose Migiro, who comes from Tanzania is seen by many as an inspiration for hundreds of women, not only from our country, but the world over. And, uh, since this meeting has focused on rural women, I believe the outcome of this meeting will be an important input into the processes and uh, plans that countries uh, will undertake through the CSW. In fact, the United Nations Commission on the Status of Women, scheduled to take place later in New York, has started setting the agenda, which is largely related to the main issues expounded on in Doha.